Hello everyone and welcome to the Forex for Beginners webinar hosted by ForexCube.com. I'm Christopher Smilas, the Head of Sales and Training at uh, SwapHunter.com. I've been a uh, professional trader for over 10 years now. I uh, started out trading for myself, of course, in the beginning. Um, some mistakes or lessons, as I prefer to call them, were experienced along the way. But I was determined, so I got myself back up and got back into the game, made sure that I didn't repeat those same mistakes. So, I learnt new skills and, and used different strategies and made new and different mistakes, which once again um, I gained knowledge and discipline from in order to develop further. Eventually, after a lot of dedication, time, studying, hard work, I didn't repeat these previous mistakes. And the purpose and mission of what I do these days is mentoring and teaching new traders um, and investors like yourselves to help them become successful. Under my guidance, I can fast track you to being a well-rounded trader within a few trading sessions. Over the years, I've done a lot of portfolio management, PAM and MAM account management, and also manage my own funds. So I understand very well uh, the hard work it takes to successfully manage an extensive portfolio. What I have learned is that you need to be adaptable in today's market con um, conditions. The highly unpredictable events going on around the world right now are creating higher levels of volatility and unprecedented um, sort of reasons are causing this level of volatility. So you need a plan A, a plan B and plan C. Um, I've built a great team around me over the past 10 years here in Cyprus all who have uh, expertise in different sectors of the financial markets. This makes it easy for me to remain well informed, diversified and to have a balanced portfolio using multiple strategies with one core strategy that gives me an edge over the market. Being on the ground here in Cyprus, the Forex hub of the world, it's considered, it also enables me to build solid relationships with the best brokers in the industry, Forex Cube being one of them. I'm going to put on the uh, chat the um, link, okay, the registration link for uh, ForexCube.com so you can download a, a demo account uh, to test their, their uh, conditions out for yourself, okay? And I will, I will sort of outline their, their trading conditions and the environment that they provide our clients and uh, could, could provide you with as well. So I'm really very excited to be prevent, presenting this webinar so I can share uh, my own personal experiences, um, knowledge and potential risks and rewards of uh, Forex trading with yourselves. Okay. So um, we're going to start off with the, the very sort of basic principles of, of what Forex is, uh, the very simple, most, uh, the, 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 the stuff you need to know, you know, the basics, okay? So what is a PIP, uh, what is spread, uh, what type of assets you can trade on, supply and demand, how that works, how leverage and margin trading works. And uh, we'll, we'll sort of then go on to the second part of the webinar where I will go and log into a fresh new demo account which I've just downloaded from uh, forexcube.com. And we're going to show you how to use MT4. Now, MT4 is considered the industry standard platform um, to trade Forex. It is, I would say, probably 95% um, of the industry use MetaTrader 4 um, to, to trade and buy and sell currency okay and other assets as well so we're going to place a, a sort of demonstration trade just to show you how it's done we'll explain uh, balance and equity margin free margin and margin level and how these um, how they interact with each other uh, we'll show you some some uh, ways of placing trade orders so if you're looking for a specific price let's say on a specific asset you'll know uh, the many different ways that you can um, place place that buy or sell order and we'll go into some risk management basics as well um, stop losses and, and take profit orders uh, okay so third part of the webinar will be simple trading strategies. So we're going to go over um, sort of technical analysis um, where we'll go and, and show you, I'll, I'll show you how to use some of the indicators that uh, very technical traders use and how you use them 
um, in order to to analyze the markets and decide whether to buy or sell a particular asset. We'll discuss support resistance levels. Um, we'll have a, a, a quick overview of fundamental analysis as well. There are essentially two types of analyses in Forex and that Forex traders use. There's technical analysis and also fundamental analysis. Technical analysis is more using the charts and fundamental analysis is more using the news and uh, data points, economic uh, sort of data points and uh, data uh, figures that uh, that are coming out every day okay and again we'll cover again uh, risk management because risk management is probably at the core uh, the most important thing you need to know and, and understand and learn about forex trading in order to be successful okay so we'll discuss risk management again um, when we're inside uh, the MT4 platform and then we will discuss the current market conditions what's happening around the world right now what's moving the markets right now um, we'll go into how um, the, the 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 president of the United States Donald Trump and how his tweets can have huge effects on on the stock markets it's a very new um, thing for traders to be able to adapt to uh, it's it's extremely new it's never happened before so we'll go into that a little bit we'll discuss the current low interest rate environment that we're all in right now at the banks you don't have um, uh, you know any any sort of high interest rates at any of the banks at the moment like we used to so you know we'll, we'll, we'll also be handing out uh, we'll, we'll sort of uh, you can download what we will uh, our handout okay where you know um, you'll you'll be able to uh, get everything that we're going through um, right now in PDF format. You've got it in writing. We'll discuss the trade war uh, as well, how uh, the tariffs on China um, exports uh, from, from the United States are affecting the markets and causing uh, tension, global tension, um, global slowdown. And we'll also go into how we're coming to the end of the what we call the economic cycle. So there's a general sort of rule uh, when it comes to how long the markets go up and then how long it takes them. Um, you know, it's generally sort of seven to ten year rule. But anyway, we'll get into it a little bit later. OK, so with um, with the webinar, um, the the go to um, platform that we're using for the webinar you can find the the handout file to download you should be able to see it on the on the uh, the, 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 the uh, platform there and also if you have any questions then just type them into the chat and we will respond as as quickly as possible okay so before I go any further, I just want to sort of throw a, a sort of disclaimer out there regarding the risks associated with Forex trading. Obviously, I'm not going to read through this entire slide uh, because it'll waste a lot of time. But at the, at the core of what I'm what, what, what we're trying to the message we're getting across here and what any Forex company is uh, getting across with uh, their risk disclaimers is that you shouldn't be investing in the Forex market if you can't afford to essentially. So don't invest money you can't afford to risk on the market markets um, you know that that's essentially the 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 rule okay so let's get into it forex basics what is forex or commonly called FX okay foreign exchange so um, it's a global market which you know any which means sort of any anybody can anybody can can uh, trade um, in 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 forex and and make a make a good return from it as well all right essentially it just allows the exchange of one currency for another um, and you know you have to take advantage of let's say one currency falling and another currency gaining and this is how you make money you buy one and sell the other um, and this is how you're going to make money on um, trading forex okay so anyone can do it um, you do obviously need to know a little bit uh, about uh, the forex industry before you start trading you can't just do it blindly which is one of the main reasons why I do what I do this is why we're doing this webinar um, so you know pay attention to what I'm saying please and if you do have any questions throughout any time throughout the webinar please post them on the on the chat in the um, go to webinar um, platform we're using so um, it is the largest financial market in the world Five trillion dollars a day are being traded on the forex market uh, every every single day. Okay, so five trillion dollars of of, um, of trading volume 
that that basically means exchanges the liquidity of the financial of the uh, forex market the liquidity is five it's a five trillion dollar a day industry okay so um, this is what I mean by it being a global market okay it's open 24 hours a day five days a week and um, this this is great for for you know inter international um, you know, investors, people who live in America are asleep while I'm uh, executing my first trade. Uh, so, you know, and, and so on and so forth, you know. So it just means that it's open all the time and you can always get in and make money uh, as long as it's between Monday and Friday. So essentially what happens is, you know, on a Sunday night, let's say, when the market is just opening, we'll start off in, in uh, Sydney, then Tokyo will open. These are the stock exchanges I'm referring to. So the Sydney Stock Exchange, Tokyo the Nikkei, uh, the Tokyo Stock Exchange, then Europe will start opening up. Uh, so London first, then Frankfurt in Germany follows very shortly afterwards. They generally they open at the same time, but sometimes Germany open about sort of 30 minutes later generally. Um, and then obviously New York, the New York Stock Exchange is open up. Okay, so you know this is um this is what i mean by it being a global market okay just a very simple analogy to explain what forex is um think about going on holiday okay and you're let's say you're leaving from london you're going to new york all right and um you have 100 pounds in your pocket and you know that you're going to need some cash when you get off the plane in, in New York. All right. So you go to the Bureau de Change and you give them 100 pounds. They give you roughly with the current exchange rates, they're going to give you about 120 dollars. So you then uh, leave the Bureau de Change. You have 120 dollars in your pocket. For whatever reason, your holiday gets canceled. You can't get on that plane. You have to go back to the Bureau de Change and buy your pounds back with the dollars that you've just bought. OK. So one transaction has already been made. Okay, so you've bought pound, you've bought dollars with pounds. Now a second transaction has to take place. You have to get your pounds back, but you have one hundred and twenty dollars in your pocket. Are you going to get exactly one hundred pounds back? No, you're not. Okay, and I'm sure you've all been uh, in you know in this sort of similar situation. Um, you're going to get roughly, let's say, for example, around ninety five, ninety eight pounds back. Now that's what we call spread. Okay, now that is that is how forex companies make their money. Okay, if they're a good forex company, that is all they're making their money from is the spread, not commissions, not hidden fees, not hidden charges. That's how they make their money, and that's fair. That's the way that it works. Okay, that's the way the industry works. All right, so that's a very basic analogy and the most basic way I can explain uh, what forex is and how it how it works and how the industry makes money. So then. Uh, let's talk about pips. Okay, it's a word you're going to hear a hell of a lot of. Okay, um, what is a pip? Okay, it is essentially the measurement of an exchange rate to the fourth decimal place. Um, it, it's an abbreviation. It's a percentage in point or price interest point. As I've just mentioned, it is the measurement of the fourth decimal place. All right. So this is what forex traders are looking to make. They're looking to make pips. Okay. So with dollar currencies, so for instance here we have euro against the US dollar, euro being the base currency and the dollar being the counter currency or the second currency. And let's take this example for instance, we've got uh, 1.1051 or 10.51, okay? Generally forex traders won't mention the one, um, they'll just say sort of the rate right now is 10.51, they generally only refer to these four decimal places because you're not going to find a much bigger move, uh, you know, if you're making 10, 20, 30, 40 uh, to you know 100 200 pips a day you're going to be very happy okay now it is confused with tick size <clears throat> or tick value sometimes they're two different things all right um, basically a tick let's say um, or a point okay so let's say um, on um, on, on any any asset, for instance, okay, it has a, a specific tick value or tick size, which it is the, the the smallest movement it can make. It could be a lot smaller or a lot bigger than than what the pip is is worth. Okay, so just be be aware of it, and um, you know, um, 
just be very careful when entering into a trade that you are fully aware of the difference and what the value of a tick is and what the value of the pip is in re in relation to what leverage you're using and so on and so forth because it could be um, the 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 end of you uh, very very quickly. Okay, so what sort of assets can we trade in forex? Currencies, obviously, um, euro, dollar, pounds, yen, um, yuan, commodities, gold, oil, silver. These are hard commodities. You also get soft commodities like wheat, corn, sugar, for instance. Indices, these are generally the stock markets. Okay, so the DAX in Germany, the FTSE in London, the NASDAQ, which is the tech uh, stock index in, in New York. Dow Jones Industrials, so uh, as a very self-explanatory there, it is the top 30 industrial companies in the US and obviously then we have the biggest stock exchange in the world, the S&P 500, 500 biggest companies in the world, generally um, all, all, all sorts of stocks uh, are in these indices and then stocks, individual stocks you can trade on, so uh, you can buy Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Facebook, um, Microsoft, whatever whatever is available at your, your particular asset. And then we have uh, cryptocurrencies, very interesting um, sort of times, you know, with, with Bitcoin um, having hit sort of 20,000 back in 2017, then it went down to five. Uh, now it's sort of a few couple of months ago, back up at 15, and now again, we're, we're, we're back below 10. It's a very, very volatile market, cryptocurrencies, very very fast moving assets okay so do be careful when trading uh, cryptocurrencies that you're not using too much leverage and you're just being more careful than with with other other assets okay so supply and demand the very basics of of economics all right uh, somebody wants something somebody has something they name a price based on the the amount that they have um, we can uh, I'm gonna use an example of, of oil in a minute just to sort of explain that a little bit more so um, what goes up must come down now inevitably um, after a certain amount of time, let's say a, a bullish trend on, on a stock market, it's going to go up and up and up. But of course, at some point, it has to start coming down. And in the forex market or stock trading or whatever, nothing goes up in a straight line. So you're generally zigzagging. So this is based on supply and demand. Okay. What goes down must come up too. So basically, just the reverse of everything I've just said. So if you're in a, a long term downward trend eventually that asset unless it's going completely out of business like uh, a specific company unless they're going absolutely bankrupt which is which is rare um, you know if they're listed on a stock exchange but it does happen eventually once uh, once it reaches a certain level of uh, that downtrend it will reverse and come back up this is all based on supply and demand uh, resistance uh, and support levels uh, which we'll we'll go into okay so just to explain how um, you know supply and demand works very quickly. Let's say oil inventories, which are released generally, um, well, every week. Um, when when there's less oil out there, it's more expensive. When there's more oil being pulled out of the ground, let's say, uh, for instance, in the Permian Basin right now in Texas, there's a lot of oil from fracking and all of that being brought out of the ground. So um, the price of oil, as you've you may have noticed, you may have seen on the news, um, you know, a couple of years ago, it went from $100, and now we're floating around sort of $50 to $60 a barrel. I think fracking might have something to do with that. It's very important these days since the previous recession in 2007-08 um, quantitative easing was introduced by the central banks now what the central banks decided to do how, how are we going to get get uh, get stimulate the markets how are we going to boost the markets again they came up with QE or quantitative easing now all that is in very simple terms is money printing it's just printing money and loaning it out to um, to to large corporations and and uh, essentially what what they then should be doing is loaning it out to small businesses and individuals so that they can maybe start small businesses but that's not happening um, you know but that that's that's a whole other issue in itself but that's what QE is and let's say um, tomorrow the Federal Reserve decide to stimulate the economy with uh, you know printing um, you know let's say hundred billion dollars 
then uh, then you're going to see a big rally on the markets and you're going to see the dollar come down because on the rules of supply and demand if there's more dollars out there the value of the dollar will go down okay so moving on leverage you're going to hear a lot about this um, leverage is a feature offered by forex brokers essentially to incentivize traders to trade uh, larger amounts of money to trade more volumes um, it is a double-edged sword it increases the risk um, uh, you know that you're holding on your account okay but think of it like a loan that doesn't need to be paid back um, in a sense um, that's what it is okay that's that's the incentive so if you put in a thousand dollars they give you a one to one hundred leverage you've got a hundred thousand dollars to trade with on the markets so it increases your trading power it increases the value of every pip on each trade what it also does um, now let me let me just step back a little bit it, when I say it, it increases the value of every pip on each trade that can work for you in a very good way but it can also work against you in a very big way it just means that every pip um, an asset moves up you're going to get uh, let's say a hundred times if you have a hundred uh, one to one hundred leverage you're going to get a hundred times the value of what you would be able to do um, if you didn't have that leverage but of course if it's going down and moving against you you're going to lose uh, much faster as well so do be careful when using leverage <clears throat> it gives you more margin to play around with as well okay so stop outs and, and running out of, of equity and margin um, is, is much less likely all right so just be you know I'm just going to reiterate use the correct sort of risk management when using high leverages as it also increases um, increases the risk so um, I see we have a, a question in in the chat um, a couple of questions I'm just um, going to uh, have a quick look at the questions and just deal deal with that um, okay so all right so um, okay the question is in trading if I win does somebody else lose am I playing against the house or other people it's a very good question okay now essentially yes it is a zero-sum game if, if somebody is winning somebody is losing okay but there's always it, it's more think of it more like you're not taking money from another person think of it like if you're winning in Forex you're taking money from the bank okay the bank is losing or the, or the liquidity provider that's that's providing liquidity to the Forex brokerage now if they're straight through processing your trades are going straight out to the markets okay so straight through to the tier one level banks the biggest banks in the world that's who you're trading against in Forex okay so if if you can just uh, bear with me a second I'm just going to look at um okay well I hope that answers your question all right so that was Sebastian and Cabello Ramoleffa I think so anyway I'm just going to, to move on and we're going to move into the MetaTrader 4 basics so Basically, now um, what what I'd like to what I'd like to do is just get MetaTrader 4 opened. So I'm going to throw MetaTrader 4 up now. Again, use the links that I've provided you in the chat to register for your own um, for your own uh, demo account. And please, if you do have any more questions, just write them in the chat. Okay. All right. So thank you. Now again use that link that we've provided you in the chat so that you can go through register your details with forex cube download your own demo account um, so that you'll be able to see metatrader 4 which is what we're going to go into right now okay so this is what you will look at this is what you will see you'll be able to select an amount of money in your demo account whether it be 10,000 50,000 100,000 whatever is more realistic for you I would advise that that's what the, the that's the amount that you should um, have in your demo account if you're thinking about investing in Forex okay so essentially this is what you'll be faced with when opening 
a uh, an MT4 or MetaTrader 4 demo account. All right. So you're going to see, obviously, you know, you've got some some uh, menu options here, but I want to focus on these symbols here because essentially there are many ways to do the same thing in in MetaTrader 4 in MT4. Uh, what we have here is is four charts. One is gold XAU USD. All right, Euro US dollar, the most traded currency pair in the world. Um, New Zealand dollar or the Kiwi dollar and dollar yen. So dollar against the Japanese yen. All right. So um, you can look at and study these charts in different time frames. OK, so this is what we have here. Very high frequency traders tend to use a one minute chart and they look at the ticks. You see, like the, 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 the gold, gold has just moved down a tick there from, uh, you know, 20 cents. OK, so much high frequency short term traders higher risk traders use smaller time frames and the higher the time frame that you go up you'll find generally the longer term trader uses okay so we're going up the time scales here one hour four hour one day one week one month now a very long term investor is more likely to use a monthly chart than he is a one minute chart um, that's that's guaranteed okay because they want to see the price action and and this is where we come into technical analysis this is how you use technical analysis you're looking at historical prices and then you're looking at where the price is now and then you're weighing up the odds using certain indicators like relative strength index or moving averages or um, volume indicators in order to give you a good idea on if you should start buying now because gold has come up a heck of a lot in in just uh, you know the past sort of six months um, because of low interest rates, because of um, you know trade tensions with the trade war, so on and so forth. So gold traders have done very well, but it's up at 1532 right now. Um, so is it a good time to hold? Is it a good time to buy right now? Who knows? Who's to say? I mean, if I studied it and analyzed it for a good time, uh, good well, I'd probably say um, it's good for a, a short. It's good for a sell. Now I've gone back down to 15 minute uh, time frame, and you can see. As, as the markets have reached, you know, they're, they're dipping, gold was going up. Now we're seeing the opposite thing. There's a correlation. The markets are, are, are sort of going back up and gold is looks like it's, it's about to start coming back down. So it could be a very good sell. That goes for the same with euro dollar. OK, so that basically covers time frames and how and why individuals use them. Um, and what type of traders use different types of time frames. All right, so we're going to have a quick look at the, the tools here um, available on MT4. Um, you've got sort of like a, you know, a grid cursor here. And then we have um, horizontal lines, which are very good for setting up your, uh, let's say, you know, a price that you're, you're, you're concentrating on. Let's say that you want to buy, um, you know, uh, gold at uh, 1526, you would, you would do that. Or in order, let's say, to set up a channel. Okay, you can see that there's, there's a kind of channel here. All right, it's at least it's forming. So from 1550, it's a very strong psychological level on gold as well. Hits 1525, tries to hit, get back up to uh, 1550 with a couple of stumbles along the way, but it did do it. It's back up at 1550, and again, it's coming back down, just as it did here before. That's, that's support. This is a support level, and this is a resistance level. You can see it's a successful way of an analyzing the markets, but of course, you have to take into consideration the fundamentals that uh, are going on around the world, trade war um, and uh, you know Trump tweets and so on and so forth. All, all, all that sort of thing affects uh, prices or asset prices. OK, so um, let's have a quick look at uh, Market Watch. This is where you're going to find all of your listed assets. OK, these are the sort of assets that you can choose from. And, you know, um, it's good to have a diversified portfolio. It's good to have, uh, you know, sort of um, exposure on many different, uh, many different um, assets in order to not put all of your eggs in one basket. OK, we've also got our Navigator which is where you're going to find your different uh, accounts and whatnot, and you're going to find indicators as well. All right, so 
you've got everything here Bollinger Bands you can just drag and drop you can set the parameters very simply now you have Bollinger Bands on gold Bollinger Bands we can go into in another webinar or of course you can get in touch with me through the swaphunter.com website or through the handout that we've given out in the chat and you can get in touch um, with me with all my contact details there in the handout <clears throat> so uh, moving on um, Navigator this like I said I mean this is essentially where you're going to find all the different accounts and, and different indicators all right most importantly uh, probably would be the terminal all right so with um, with our terminal this is terminal okay this window here you see where it says terminal here you can see trades your exposure account history um, certain news and all, all sorts of other things in, in terminal it's a very important window in MT4 okay and this is how you place a trade so I'm going to click on the chart gold here I'm going to use the new order button in order to uh, place just a random uh, a random trade let's say now um, the minimum trade size you can put is one micro lot 0.01 .01 lots okay um, let's go let, let's live a little uh, let's place a lot on gold while we're doing the seminar obviously this is just a demo account so there's no real money at risk here so I'm being very I'm not being too cautious all right but I'm going to sell gold all right there you go there's your order number uh, one lot XAU USD at 1533 successful okay and now you can see the trade here all right, there's your trade order number, the time it was executed, where, which direction, so on and so forth. Okay, the price you got it at, the current price of gold, um, and and this is where we're going. We're already uh, six uh, six dollars up on this trade. Okay, within a couple of seconds, but it's a big trade. One lot is a very big trade, and it will move, um, you know, rapidly, um, considering that. Uh, Europe is just <clears throat> closed. New York opened a couple of hours ago. So now we're getting into, um, you know, it, it, things start quietening down in a couple of hours or so, but there's still volatility out there. There's still liquidity out there. <clears throat> okay, so um, just to explain these. Uh, the, these these things here okay so what's balance what's equity what's margin okay balance shows the amount of deposited uh, money in your trading account okay and uh, you won't see a difference in this this figure here until you've opened or closed the trade so I'm going to close this trade and we'll see okay as I said, it's a brand new uh, demo account so you've got to accept some terms and conditions and whatnot just click OK there and we'll close this trade with a $20 loss. All right. So now you see the balance has been affected. It's been it's been affected. But let's open a trade again. Okay. So we're selling again another gold trade sell. All right. Okay. So equity balance and equity show the same values as long as there are no open orders. Um, essentially, equity is balance um, plus the the profit and loss you have here. Okay, so we have forty nine thousand nine hundred and seventy eight minus the floating P and L will give you the equity. Now, generally, equity is the most important number and figure you should be focusing on. Never mind what's in the balance. You could have a million dollars in the balance, but be minus nine hundred ninety nine thousand, and you could only have one thousand dollars of equity. So don't focus too much on the balance okay now um, margin is the amount of money that is used to open a position or trade and it is calculated based on the leverage okay there's a formula to 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 explain it in a bit more detail which will again be in the handout we're giving out in the in the um, the go to webinar so Margin level is very important as well. You need to keep a good close eye on on uh, on margin level. Margin level is the ratio of equity to margin. All right. So um, essentially, it's 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 the the um, what will happen is a margin call. Okay. So if your margin level drops down to generally most most brokers use 100%. If it drops down or reaches 100%, um, you can still close your positions, your open positions, but you can't take any new positions. You've run out of margin. Okay. So you either need to start closing some of the losing trades or, or you know winning trades to 
to release more margin in order for you to recover. Now, generally your broker will give you a call if you reach this level and he'll say, listen, you need to put in more money or you need to close some trades, otherwise you're going to get stopped out. Now, stop out level. So let's say, for example, when the stop out level is set at, uh, let's say, 50% by a broker, so the margin level hits 50%, they will automatically start closing the, the, the biggest losing uh, uh, positions. Okay, They will be the first trades that go. So you'll find your account very quickly depleting if you're reaching a stop out level. Okay? The reason why this limit is set up is that the brokerage can't allow you to lose more money than you've deposited. Okay, so it's kind of like a negative balance protection. So you, this is another thing that Forex Cube are offering. Some brokers don't offer it, so be aware of that. Um, once again, um, you know you've you've got the registration link for Forex Cube there, and um, I want to go into trade orders. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the gold chart here. Okay, and I could put a sell limit. All right. Wherever I wherever I clicked right, okay. If I'm clicking, this is the current price here. If I'm right clicking above, it'll say sell limit. So let's put a sell limit. If the price goes back up to 15.43, well, let's 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 put it where it should be, you know, technically, 15.50. All right. So if it goes back up to 15.50, automatically MT4 will execute a sell trade you know, in the anticipation that we're correct with this uh, resistance level and it's not going to break through 1550, of course it could, but um, it looks like a pretty solid psychological uh, resistance level at this, at this moment in time. So that's one way of doing it. You can also have a, a, a buy limit. If you're right clicking underneath the current price, you see now it says buy limit. So let's put it where it should be. Let's put it at 1525 roughly. So if the price hits there, automatically, once again, trade will be executed and you'll start buying gold at 15.25. Okay, so we have also um, what, what we call uh, one-click trading. So this is a much sort of quicker way of, of executing trades, sell, buy. You can see simply, uh, um, you know, let's go for another sell. Why not? If I just click on sell, you can see another trade has been set up and our buy limits and sell limits are here. They haven't been executed yet, nothing's happening, and you can see the prices that you've you've got them set at here. All right. So um one click trading is is it's just a much easier way of, of executing a trade. Um it's much quicker as well. Now a little bit more uh, advanced uh way of, of of setting up trades, okay, or orders, I should say. These are trade orders, they're not instant execution or market execution. If you go into right click on the chart that you're on the asset that you're trading, you can have what we call a sell stop. OK, or you can do another buy limit like you can here. But let's say that you, you think, OK, maybe gold, maybe gold will break through 1525. And if it does that, I want to be hedged. So, um, you know, if it breaks down to 1500, at least you have some protection here with this trade. OK, or what I'm doing right now is selling gold. OK, but if I'm wrong. I would want a buy order up here. If it breaks through 1550, I want a buy order up here just to hedge myself. And in order to be fully hedged, I'd need to put two buy stops there. So I've got two lots waiting here to be executed. I've got a sell limit here, which would give me three sell trades. So to be fully 100% hedged, I'd need another buy stop. Okay, so that's, that's essentially um, you know, when you hear buy order, sell order, buy limit, sell limit, that's how you do it in MT4. All right. Now, very, very complicated, uh, very advanced way of doing things, for, which I won't go into in too much detail because I know you're all beginners. This is called depth of market. So you can essentially see where uh, many, many uh, sort of global traders are, are going in and putting their orders at. OK, and you can do the same. You can just simply click buy stop here at 1531 or sell limit at 1531. So that will execute those orders using depth of market. Okay, but we'll leave that alone for now because this is for beginners, not for people who will be using um, one uh, sort of uh, depth of depth of market. Okay, so 
commonly used strategies we've we've touched upon here okay so we have technical analysis which the most f sort of basic basic uh, form of technical analysis is the supply and demand or support and resistance levels okay so like I've like I've already explained, we've got a channel forming here, 1550, 1525, 1550, 1525 most probably. Now you can see I'm 350, $360 in profit. I'm going to take that. When I see a profit, I like to take it. I don't like to muck around or stay in a trade for too long unless I'm using an, another strategy. Now just for the case and just for the purpose of this seminar, let's open another another sell trade okay or why not hedge okay so we've got a buy order and a sell order now okay this is called hedging now it's a good way to protect yourself um, it's a technique that some traders use what they will do is they will let the hedge let's say the sell trade come into a profit when they think it's going to start going back up let's say 1525 they'll take the money on the sell order and let the losing buy trade then recover now at Swap Hunter we do have a very specific way of hedging the markets which um, I would love to go into. We did a previous webinar about Swap Hunter and what we do at Swap Hunter using carries and swaps and uh, but it's it's much too complicated for beginners. Um but we do offer a managed um a managed account solution um as well. So um you know do do look out and if you have any questions put it in the chat and uh, we'll we'll deal with that. So let's have a look at some indicators. And um, you will find them here mainly. All right, so we can go, let's say, uh, with with our Bollinger Bands again, or why not go with um, let's let's put a uh, let's put a channel in. Let's have a look at Euro Dollar. Let's open this up a bit. We'll go into one hour. Let's expand it. Okay, so we see that we have uh, generally. We, we've we've got a trend forming here. We're in a downward trend. Okay, so we would set this up in such a way that you can see where the price tends to bounce off. So it, it's in a downward trend generally. But you can set up trend lines in order to give you a, a sort of indication on where you know if where to buy and where to, where to sell. Okay, these are the same as support and resistance levels, but they're moving. Okay, they're moving in a trend. So you've still got you've got a support level here, another support level there, there, and what we should probably see is gold maybe hitting oh sorry, euro dollar, uh hitting sort of one ten or getting closer to one ten. And again, of course, we can you know, this is a very basic demonstration of how to use trend lines, but this is how they're how they're used. Okay. So we can see that Euro dollar is caught in a downtrend and has been for quite a while, um, a very very long while um, actually. If we go back into up it, up into uh, let's say a weekly chart, you'll see that uh, yes, it is extremely bearish. Now when I say bearish, it's extremely negative. There's a lot of sellers, and again you can see how this works with the trend line. You can see that the price is bouncing off this this moving support line a lot. But more importantly, it's sort of bouncing down. There, there are bigger moves to the downside from the trend line. Okay. And um, so that's a, that's a trend, uh, sort of trend, trend uh, sort of levels and, and how you set up trend channels. Okay. Um, we can also have a very, very quick look at um, what I'm going to do here. Just close this down. I'm going to expand gold, go into a day chart, and we're going to just have a very, very quick look at Fibonacci's. Okay, now it's a little bit, uh, so I'm not going to spend too much time on Fibos because it is a little bit complicated. Okay, it's essentially um, based on Fibonacci, the famous mathematician's um, uh, sequence. Okay, and you can see how it works. Pretty pretty well here in this in this case you can see that this this line here the 50% uh, uh, level on the Fibos here is working as a as a sort of support level which it um, well it was working as a resistance level in the first place and then it got caught in this channel so again support and resistance here but it broke through again support and resistance it broke way 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 up to 1550 and here we are at the highest level gold has been at for. Um, 
over five years now. So it's at a very, very, very high level. Um, what um, I think, I think, um, you know, really, I mean, we, we can, we can, we can go into moving averages um, and uh, exponential moving averages, simple moving averages, and other ways of, of um, analyzing the markets using uh, technical uh, analysis. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to the indicator um, uh, menu. I'm going for a moving average. I'm putting the period as 14 day moving average. Industry standards, you've got 14 day, um, 10, 20, 50, 100, um, so on and so forth, even 200. Um, and they all sort of work together. You can see this, this moving average is very much moving in, in sync with the middle line of the Bollinger Bands, generally giving you, uh, this is, this is where the price has to move back to eventually. Okay, it goes, it goes above it, it rides above it, but then it will, it will break, it'll reach it, meet it again, go below it, then it'll break above it, it'll meet it again, go below it. And you can see these patterns, okay? You can see these patterns forming. Again here, now we're coming into a slightly downtrend, so it will, this is the central point. It's the, it's the average price of the asset without all the spikes. It's just evened out. So, um, I think, um, you know, to be honest, I, I, I would like to go into really quickly just, uh, you know, sort of more, more volume based uh, indicators like uh, relative strength index. It's a very commonly used um, indicator. Now, it's also very simple to use. You can see that it has a um, uh, relative, uh, ba basically relative strength index works like this, okay? If it's at 70, it's overbought and you're going to see a correction to the downside, okay? And if it's at 30, it's oversold and you're going to see a correction to the upside. Now, it's not guaranteed, it's just an indication, okay? So you can see here quite clearly, um, let me get my, my grid tool, you can see when it reached 70 here, actually a uh, a little bit above 76 we saw it come down again and, but we're in an uptrend okay so we're, we're, we're bouncing off of 70 constantly now it even got as high here in this case as 86 it can go up to 100 of course and zero and 100 but generally the rule is 70 is overbought so you should look at selling and 30 is oversold and you should look at buying and you can use it across different time frames in order to suit the way that you want to be trading okay so if you want to be trading much quicker and shorter time frames then use a 15 minute chart and perhaps adjust the the uh, parameters of your relative strength index so um very quickly i want to go back into the um the slides and discuss um uh s sort of um the, the the general market condition okay now okay well look um i i think we've kind of run out of time oh oh so we do we do we have some questions actually um okay so what books would you recommend to get started with would you say trading is more about one's personality as opposed to trading strategy um Look, um, what, I, what I would suggest um, for, for all of you beginners is, is to use companies like SwapHunter.com. Um, books are great. There's a lot of information out there and tutorials out there on the internet for you to take uh, to, to, to learn as much as you like. Um, you know, and, and put in as much work as you want. But I mean, I've been trading for over 10 years now, and uh, it's taken a long time to get to where I'm at now, where I'm not making silly mistakes and I'm consistently generating profits. Um, now, what I, I, I would love to um, sort of recommend uh, one, one book in particular, but um, I don't, I, I, I've never used, uh, I generally sort of, um, you know, I, I like mentorship, I like one-on-one -on -one training, uh, and that's generally the sort of service that I provide um, along with, uh, with Forex Cube. So if you were to register, you know, and get a demo account opened, get a, get a live account opened, you would have someone like myself to be able to talk to every single day in order to, um, to coach you, teach you, and, sh and show you 
um, show you the way. Now I'm going to put a, a link on the chat here to um, SwapHunter.com where you can register your, your details and I would also recommend using our YouTube channel to keep up to date with all the videos that we're producing um, that, that relate to different techniques, different strategies, what's going on in the markets at the moment, how to, you know, how we're trading, how I'm uh, looking, you know, how, how myself and my team are, are looking at the markets, where we think the, mar the market is moving. So to answer the question, um, the best way to, to move forwards and to, to learn is to get in touch with, with people who know more than yourself and communicate with them and interact with them. Okay. So, um, basically, um, I'm just going to, um, okay, uh, can, a, can a team of individuals create an account as a fund? Now, that's a good question, um, Alex. Um, Alex, basically, there, there are solutions like PAMs, okay, so we have what's called a PAM account um, that we run um, uh, and, and we also run with, with Forex Cube. Um, so, yeah, a, a team of individuals can can pull their money together, um, you know, in, in a number of ways. So either using a PAM solution where you've each got individual accounts, let's say $1,000, there's 10 of you, you each have $1,000, you all keep your own money, um, you know, in your own name, but it, it goes into a pool or a fund and whatever, you know, um, let's say one guy puts $10,000 into the PAM, another guy puts $1,000 into the PAM. Obviously, when you make a profit, let's say $1,000, the guy who put $10,000 is going to get 10 times as much profit as you are. So, you know, we can, you can most certainly send me an email or get in touch with me and I can, I can deal with that, um, that, that sort of, you know, we can go into more detail about funds and PAMs and MAMs and, and things like that. If you do have a group of individuals that are interested in getting a PAM or a fund together, then do get in touch. Okay. So basically, I'm just going to sort of round things up with um, basically, um, you know, I, I wanted to discuss current market conditions, all right, and, and what traders are looking out for at the moment. It's very important to look out for, let's get into it, Trump tweets, okay. So for example here, what we're looking at is the Dow Jones, all right, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now we can see, With um, with my laser pen here, we're, we're looking basically here on on the uh, 23rd. So it was last Friday. Um, what happened was the Jackson Hole Symposium, where all the major global economists get together and they discuss how to deal with what's going on in the markets. Um, obviously, we have a global economic slowdown. We have low interest rates uh, globally. So this is what they were doing. Now the the Fed chairman uh, Jay Powell. Um, made a speech, okay, and um, the speech went uh, went pretty pretty well, okay. The the market dipped a little bit, but what he was saying was is that we're willing to remain more accommodative. We're thinking we could cut interest rates again, uh, but we're not going to right now. Um, and and what what happened then was you know the market liked it. There was a little rally. Okay, there was a small rally here. We're talking about, uh, okay, so 26,000 up to 26,000. It's about 200 point rally. I mean, it, it's, it's um, or, you know, not quite that much. I mean, it was like 26,000, so okay, 100, 150 points. Then um, Donald Trump gets involved and he doesn't like what he's hearing and essentially um, put, th throws, throws a tweet, a, a barrage of tweets. Um, and um, what what then happened was uh, after Donald Trump, uh, after Jerome Powell made his speech, then uh, you can see here we've we've quite 
clearly sort of labeled it out for you. Uh, this is this is the sort of vitriol, poisonous rubbish that comes out of uh, Donald Trump's mouth. Um, you know, when he is not an economist, he knows nothing about the stock markets. He has, uh, you know, on his CV, four failed casinos that went bankrupt, and he seems to think that he knows better than everybody else still. Um, so he decided to say, you know, Fed's not doing enough. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you're not doing, you're not cutting rates fast enough. We need lower interest rates. Uh, we need more quantitative easing. We need more free, cheap money sloshing around in the markets. And you can see the effect it had on the markets, on the Dow Jones. A, an absolute bloodbath from one tweet. So, so do be aware of, 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 uh, um, <laughs> to be aware of the, the environment that traders are in these days, um, Donald Trump tweets have more of an effect than the, the, the most important economist in the world. Um, so, so do look out for these tweets. They're very, very, uh, they can really shake you off your game. Okay. So low interest rates and inverted yield curves um, hasn't happened uh, since the last recession. And it did just happen um, a couple of weeks ago. It's happened two or three times in the past couple of weeks where 10-year treasury bonds and the return um, will, will from, from let's say, you know, you buy or uh, put $100,000 into 10-year treasuries, you're going to get roughly around sort of 1.5% return on, on that, that investment after 10 years. Now, generally what happens is you're looking at higher returns on shorter-term bonds. So a two-year bond, you would be looking at, say, 2 or 2.5%. Two What's happened now is that the two-year bond, the yield and the return you're getting has has um, ha has actually they they've crossed over. They're they're at the same level, okay? Or in fact, uh, it, it's it's going lower now. It's bonds are just a way of people preserving their equity. It's just a very very safe safe um, way of of not not losing money, um, you know, on and, and making a very small return if you're if if you're lucky. Because these days with low interest rates and the inverted yield curve, you're going to be extremely lucky um, if you make more than you know. I mean, in, in Europe right now we're at zero. We're going in, probably going to go into negative interest rates. So very high level, high net worth individuals, billionaires, millionaires will buy bonds even at a negative interest rate. So they're paying. They're paying uh, a, a premium, okay. Let's say a quarter of a percent. They buy a million dollars, and they're they're, they're going to lose 0.25 percent after, let's say, a two-year or a ten-year uh, period has passed. This is just in order to preserve their equity, okay. So this is how scary things are right now with low interest rates, and, and that goes for the same. The same goes for having your money in the bank. What are you going to What are you going to make from having your money in the bank? Nothing. You're probably going to get charged, in fact. Okay. So moving on. Um, obviously, the China trade war is not, um, you know, it's not news to anybody. We all know about it on on um, uh, any any news channel. Um, okay. So uh, it's on the news every day. All right. And it is causing a lot of a lot of volatility and 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 problems. And the, the tariffs keep going up. And on on the amount of goods, uh, it keeps going up. And then China keep retaliating in the same way. Um, hopefully, they'll, 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 there has been some some positive news and and, and chit chat on on Twitter and on the different and on Investing.com's uh, news articles recently. Actually, there was a bit of a rally today on the markets because there was a bit of good news coming out that America are now willing to talk with China and. They're going to look into some kind of solution, okay? But currently, up to 25% on on 500, half a trillion dollars worth of goods, okay? And we're coming to the end of the economic cycle. Every seven to ten years, generally, there is a recession. Um, just go ahead and look it up for yourself. <clears throat> and how do you protect yourself against recession? You get into specific uh, assets. You get into certain types of assets, and you use different strategies. Um, the next recession will be probably because there is a slowdown in growth and manufacturing and whatnot. Okay. Um, the greatest thing about Forex is that you can make money on the way up and you can make money on the way down. Okay. So you can make money selling dollars, buying dollars, 
whatever okay that is the greatest thing about forex and we have at swap hunter some very interesting strategies we'd love to share with you that are on our website that are on our youtube channel you have the links for um, we also work very closely with uh, with forex cube they also have great uh, great support and everything as well but uh, using us in tandem with them you stand a very good chance at navigating your way through the markets and through the forex market uh, successfully okay any questions at the moment just stick it in the chat if you do have any all right and um, I'm going to um, just sort of go over some of the the major benefits of having an account at Forex cube okay so uh, lightning fast execution on your trades no slippage or anything like that so if you like high frequency trading or if you, that's the sort of thing that you're looking for Forex cube can most certainly accommodate you ultra tight spreads um, true STP ECM broker that means they don't have a dealing desk they're not trading against you uh, or hedging themselves against you your market goes straight through to the open global financial markets okay safety of funds you're insured up to twenty thousand dollars you can have a look on their website regarding all of that instant deposits and withdrawals not many brokers can say that um, so it is a massive benefit and they do have some auto automated uh, trading solutions as well and um, the link um, to register a, a Forex Cube account we've put in the chat. It is in the handout. Um, so, you know, uh, get yourself registered, get yourself a demo account, open a live account, uh, however you're feeling, if you're feeling a little bit more confident after this webinar. Um, and obviously, you can learn more about us, uh, myself, and my team at uh, SwapHunter.com. Our strategies, our tools, the indicator, the SwapHunter indicator, how it works, and how it can protect you, preserve your capital, generate capital, and um, you know uh, the, there are a few different ways of using that, um, which we can go into. Um, okay, now we've got a question here. I just want to address. Do you think a no deal Brexit can be beneficial in terms of trading? Um, yes, it can be in very, very simple terms. As long as you're on the right side of the trade, um, it's going to be a difficult one to call whether to buy the pound, sell the pound, um, what's going to happen to the FTSE, the, the London Stock Exchange. It's, it's a very tough, um, you know, uh, it's a very tough trade and it, it's cost a lot of a lot of people a lot of money, but it has made a lot of people a lot of money. Um, we could do a, a another webinar regarding Brexit the closer that we get to October 31st, which is the official day. But uh, no deal Brexit is most certainly looking like uh, the, the most um, sort of common um, the common sort of outcome here so uh, of course once again you can we can uh, go into more um, more detail about brexit in in p person um, okay so Cabello you've just asked um, what is the link between swap hunter and forex cube it's a very good question fair question the link between us is we're partners okay a swap hunter act we're a company on ourselves that uh, essentially software licensing trading um, uh, referrals introducing broker sort of company all right and forex cube are a fantastic brokerage that we've selected and partnered up with and we direct clients and we work with with forex cube to um, well to, to to increase awareness of what they're doing um, what forex cube uh, are doing and the environment they they provide our clients is is sort of second to none um, and uh, you know basically we can we can uh, offer offer many benefits if if you were to come through um, you know uh, let's say let's say uh, come through swap hunter and then uh, register with forex cube you're going to get additional support you're going to get support from from forex cube and you're also going to get additional support from from swap hunter and the team here so that's that's the relationship between the two of us I hope that answers your question Cabello um, Yasantha a question from you oh you're just saying thanks this is great okay thank you very much Yasantha thank you for taking part thank you everybody for for your attention and taking part in the webinar uh, this evening I've enjoyed myself very much if there are any any uh, last questions this is your last chance because I'm just about to sign off here all right okay well listen um, 
you know, thanks, uh, thanks again. And uh, if you do have any further questions, you just pop an email over to um, us at swaphunter.com. Get in touch with the guys at forexcube.com. Um, and I hope to be talking. Um, oh, Faris, you, you got in there just in time, my friend. What would be the best shorting stock in the? Okay, what would be the best stock to short in the UK? Uh, well, that's a very good question, Faris. Um, why don't you pop me an email um, and, and we can discuss that in more detail. Um, I'm afraid uh, we're, we're sort of running out of time, but um, all of my contact details we're, we're providing um, in the handout. I've just sent over my, my email address to you, Faris, and um, that's, uh, that's where I'm going to leave it, I'm afraid. Thanks, thanks again, everybody. And... Um, Good night and uh, all the best, okay?